What's up, Blue Roof? Nice show. It's your boy, Jonathan, and uh, welcome back to another edition of Jones Kona. Yes, that's two days in a row I'm giving you, my loving fans, Jones Kona. Um, I'm a little delirious this episode. I was extremely tired, so I went to bed, fell right to sleep, and then... Woke up, thought, hey, good, I'm awake. It's one of the few days I wake up and I don't have a searing headache, so let's just start being productive. And then I looked at my phone and realized I'd been asleep for a grand total of 30 minutes. So, if I'm a little delirious, it's because I slept for a grand total of 30 minutes. And then couldn't fall back to sleep because I was wide awake. Because I slept a full night's sleep in the span of 30 minutes. That's my life. Um, anyways, so, what was that? <laughs> oh, um, so news, comic news, TV news, 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 more and more news. Um, <clears throat> I want to focus today on the DCEU. I know I'm not the, the world's biggest DC fan, but, uh, there, there's some interesting things I want to talk about. First and foremost, um, and I was kind of, well, but now people know, but James Gunn has been signed to write Suicide Squad 2. I don't know if he's directing it, but he's been signed to write it. That is awesome. Um, I like the first Suicide Squad. I, I actually, you know, it's not a popular opinion, but I think it's one of the stronger entries into that universe. Maybe mainly because the other entries are kind of weak. But um, I liked it. And if anyone could take that and elevate it to the next level, it's, it's James Gunn. I mean, I always talk about how, how big a fan of uh, John Favreau's I am and how he took a C-list character like Iron Man and turned it into the A-list character. And as impressive as that is, and it is impressive, James Gunn took Z-list team like Guardians of the Galaxy, who even Marvel comic fans are kind of like, eh, they're all right, and turned them into this generation Star Wars. And I'm sorry, the current trilogy of Star Wars movies are not this generation Star Wars. It's Guardians of the Galaxy. That's this generation Star Wars. You sit there in the theater, especially... The first Guardians, you sit there and you live it and you just, you feel it, you know? And that's, that's a magic, a sense of wonder that you don't get from a lot of movies. And he gave us that. And that's why I was just like, really? Disney's going to fire him over tweets that they, he made before he worked for them that were public, that he wasn't hiding, everyone knew about. He worked at Troma. I mean, I love Troma. I'm not saying Troma like it's a bad thing, but it's like, that's what Troma is. You knew that's his his origin. I mean, he made stupid jokes. Yet Disney hired a actual pedophile to direct a movie, and that's okay. But him making stupid jokes, oh, you're fired. It's just like Disney is insane. Um, so. I'm excited for Suicide Squad 2, and I'm worried about Guardians 3. Although Guardians 3 is still using his script, so that's cool. Um, that's I just I worry about the whoever they get to direct it. It might not have the same heart that the first two had, which is what those movies is about. But you know, we'll we'll see what happens. You know, I mean, Marvel they've been doing their thing. They haven't really had a lot of missteps, so hopefully they find someone who can fill his shoes and do a good job but uh this is a major victory for dc so i don't know i'm excited for suicide squad too and I'm, I'm just excited that james gunn's career is not ruined over stupid tweets from a decade ago i'm, I'm glad that he's bouncing back um oh the other major dc news is um but while dc has that one major victory they then immediately followed up with a defeat apparently Warner Brothers says they're done with the Henry Cavill Superman. I, I've I've had a lot of issues with the Man of Steel movie and with Batman v Superman and to a lesser extent even Justice League. He's far, far from my favorite Superman. Um, Christopher Reeve and then Dean Chain would be my two favorites. And he's, he's, he's down for it. Henry Cavill's down for it. But... A big part of it, I feel, is that it's not his fault. It's, um... Superman is a symbol of hope. Even in those movies, he says that the S on his chest stands for hope. Yet, his movies are so dark and gloomy, there's no hope in them. How do you have Superman without hope? How do you have Superman without optimism? 
That's what the character is. That's like having Incredible Hulk without anger. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Or, or Bruce Wayne without the spirit. Like, it, there's certain things that these characters need, you know? And, and his is hope and it's optimism. And Zack Snyder took that from him. And then people wonder, and then Warner Brothers and everyone wonders why people don't connect with that movie the way they should or connect with the, the character the way they should. And it's because you stripped away his defining essence, his defining characteristic, and then expect people to just be okay with that. And that doesn't make any sense. But um, I, I think that it's a mistake to get rid of him as Superman. I think they should give him Man of Steel 2 and give it to someone who understands the character better. I feel like DC's just, they, they're so ready to just give up. Ben Affleck wants to keep doing Batman. Oh, well, he's gone. Henry Cavill has been talking about wanting to do Man of Steel. Well, he's gone. And it's like the, the second something doesn't work, you just toss it aside. And it's like, I don't know. It just, there's a lack of understanding of who and what their characters are there. And it's why Marvel's movies are working. And I think the, I think the blame for a lot of Warner Brothers' problems at the comic book field is the editorials, the the people in charge, man, the executives. They're messing shit up. Boy, that's that's just my opinion. Um, talk about some TV news. Uh, first and foremost, I forgot on yesterday's episode to talk about the first episode of Titans, which was amazing. And the fuck Batman line. Oh, it makes it makes a lot more sense in the context of how the show went. But it's really good. Um, Robin is an interesting character. Uh, a, a kind of... I read somewhere that he's been away from Batman for like a year, but it's like, how is he a detective already? Like, doesn't that take some time to just become a detective? That I, I found weird. But beyond that, it's, it's really interesting. Him and Raven's story, and then what's going on with Starfire. Uh... You don't really see a lot of Beast Boy in the first episode, but um, mainly because it was so focused on um, Robin and Raven, like they were the A story and the B story was Starfire, and then Beast Boy was an afterthought. So you know we'll see we'll see how, what happens with episode two, but it was it was really good. It was a solid episode. Um, I loved it. Uh, after that, uh, I caved and I watched the first episode of Charmed. I know I said I was going to wait till I finished the old one again before watching it. I was like, I just want to see what it's about. Um, I don't like to be negative about things, uh, especially in reviews. But if I'm being honest, I feel like the show is trying too hard to be relevant. Uh, this goes without saying, there, there might be some minor spoilers, but uh, the episode... How do I say this? Um, the the middle sister. If you've ever watched Step by Step, you know the I forget her name, but the the blonde daughter. She you know she was kind of the token feminist on that show. And it feels like the the middle sister in the show is is that, like it's not it it's it's a talking point. She's just a talking point. Like she just over and over again. It, it's trying too hard to be relevant and then the who the demon was in the end was so on the nose that it, it kind of lacked subtlety you know that, that those, those are just minor complaints I had and then also the oldest sister's chemistry with the younger two sisters I felt was really off and I get um, you know she, she's their stepsister she doesn't it's half sister she doesn't know them at all but Paige had a chemistry with Phoebe and Piper, and there's not that that kind of chemistry, you know. But um, the biggest complaint I have about that, and I'm, I'm biggest complaint I have about the show, and I'm I'm really hoping that it was just because that first episode was jam packed. It was a 40 minutes episode, and it was packed full of stuff. So I'm hoping that it was just because of that. But a lot of the fun of the original Charmed was removed from this show. It was it kind of taking itself too seriously. And I'm hoping again that it was just because of how packed it was. 
because you you meet the youngest sister and she's she's clearly their Phoebe. You can tell that like, all right, there 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 can be some fun in this show if they let it, and it, it feels like it's there bubbling underneath. So that's why I'm thinking like it's just because they were trying to do so much in that episode that they didn't get a real a chance to explore the the lighter side. But I'm hoping as as the season unfolds, it becomes a little lighthearted because that's that's part of what made the original show so great was that yeah there was some stuff that was serious there was some stuff that was emotional but there was a fun to it a joy. Um, and I just hope that they they maintain some of that you know. But um, the last show I want to talk about today is a show I've been waiting for since last season. Arrow. Arrow came back. Ah! Um, so, you know, Oliver's in jail. There's... Uh, it's... I'm not, I don't want to say too much because it just came on last night. But it was worth the wait. It is so good. Vigilantes are outlawed. Um, the B team from last season, if you guys remember how Team Arrow kind of broke into two teams... Well, the other team, the other, you know, the Wild Dog and Black Canary, like, there, there's some tension between them, and it's interesting. Um, it's just, it was so good, man. When when Arrow is is firing at all cylinders, it's probably one of the best shows on television. But then then it misses, you know. Sometimes like it, it goes off the rails. But when it's when it's on point, it is on point. And last night it was on point. So if you guys haven't checked out the new episode of Arrow, definitely check out the new episode of Arrow. And and check out the new episode of Chuck. I, I don't want to sit here and say like it was horrible. I just, I feel like it was trying to do too much and it missed the mark. But I feel like there's potential there. And let's hope that the potential lives up. You know? Like, let's, let's just hope. Um, I definitely think, though, all the, all the trash talking the executives were doing before the show started about how they're more feminist and more empowering and more this and that than the original charm. I really think that uh, they should bite their tongue and ask the original char for some help because they could definitely use some pointers from the OG show. But um, yeah, so that's been another episode of John's Corner. I'm Jonathan. Give us legends.